Welcome to Toffee TV today. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by the Daily Mirror Northern Sports correspondent, David Maddock. Uh, David, how are you, mate? I'm all right. I've spent three hours at the dentist, so not that good, but... <laughs> I'm you're, happy to be here talking. <laughs> you know, yeah, you can talk. That's the, that's always a good thing when you come out the dentist. <laughs> Once you feel your mouth coming back, you can get on with your life. It's it's not too bad. Uh, obviously, there's news going. You know, big news, I suppose, around Everton at the moment in terms of a Peter Kenyon support uh, consortium, uh, which is apparently trying to buy the football club. Uh, you know, obviously you've done a couple of pieces on this already. Um, when did you first hear about this this story, this link? Uh, well, actually, a few weeks ago, um, there were some rumours swirling around and there were, the, there were a couple of suggestions and actually the name Kenyon did come up, but not necessarily in connection with a, with a takeover as such. Mm. Um, and I think it actually transpired, and I, I subsequently learned that uh, Kenyon approached the club um, initially with some uh, suggestion of um, helping finance the stadium build. And I think it's that that it evolved from there into him then say, saying that he was fronting the consortium that um, that actually wanted to to do a full buyout of, of Everton, and and I think that's where we're at now this week. They've, they've, um, and it is only in initial stages, by the way. So yeah. I think maybe you're getting carried away by all the idea of, of exclusivity and all that. But mm. they're still actually just exploring what Everton's financial position is. Um, so, so no offer's been made, nothing like that. But they're, they're certainly in talks. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen, obviously, you read the stuff around it and there was, there was some contradiction. Um, when you you know when you're interpreting stuff of header terms signed and exclusivity, then on the other hand, it's early stages, and then two things don't necessarily go together. But how how serious do you actually think this interest is? You know what I was thinking. I was before before we started to speak. I was thinking, you know, how honest do you get in this? Because <laughs> you know, it's only my opinion. Yeah, of course. But. Well, th there's two sides to this. Mm. One, pr sports investment is probably the most lucrative investment you can have in any business form. Right. Now, I was told quite recently by, by um, someone who is a, a, a huge investor that there's only been one investment in the last 20 years that's outperformed sports, sports investment, and that's fine wine. So... <laughs> um, you you may you basically make more money out of investing in football clubs, uh, in sports clubs than you do out of, in in any other business in shares in gold whatever. Yeah. So there's that, and the the reality is there are so few opportunities to buy a Premier League football club, which is the biggest now league in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly the biggest football league, and it's now rivaling the NFL, etc. Uh, and and will overtake, I think. Um, the American sports leagues. So the chance to buy, to become a rights holder instead of just invest in yeah. in different forms in a Premier League club is is really rare, really difficult. So if one a chance did come up, then there's going to be interest. There's no doubt. Mm. But at the same time, it's got to make financial sense. And what we're hearing about Mashiri is now I've done a rough sort of back of a fag packet. Woodbines um, calculation, <laughs> and I reckon he's already in for getting on for eight hundred million. Nice. He's put about eight hundred million pounds into the club. Mm. Now that is a huge amount of money when they haven't even built the stadium. And I think, um, and again, this is my calculation, so it could be slightly inaccurate. Mm. But I think the bulk of the, the the stadium build still needs to be paid for. So that's another five hundred million. Mm. which puts, you know, Mashiri's investment at well over a billion pounds if he were to continue and, and fund the build mm. or, or find the finance for the build. And all and, and if you were to, to repay him what he's put in and then fund the stadium, you're looking at 1.2, 1.3 billion perhaps, mm. and maybe then some money to actually invest in the team. So 
that is a huge amount of money for a club that was flirting with relegation this season and for one that will not have a stadium for at least two more years mm. and or you know obviously they'll have a stadium but but not have yeah. the new stadium which is the key to biz- business growth yeah for, for at least two more years and over those two years they're going to lose a lot more money so you have got to factor that into account i mean they've lost 250 million over the last two years you could easily see that getting repeated over the next two or three years uh, until the new stadium is open mm. that's a huge amount of money that takes you up to 1.5 billion mm. now are they serious about that <laughs> i would say that they would be looking i'd say they'd be looking to get that figure down significantly mm. and then does mashiri then take a loss on his investment and that's the big question does he take a loss mm. Uh, we all know that he's had business connections in the past with Usmanov. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, he was the chairman of USM Holdings. Uh, the share that he he sold shares in Arsenal, which um, were related to Usmanov's investment in Arsenal, to buy Everton. Mm. So, you know, you could argue that he may still be influenced. Now, I'm not suggesting he is by mm. any means, but he may still be influenced by that investment. Um, and therefore, you know, it may not be his decision alone. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But nonetheless, to take a significant loss on a Premier League club, who, when the stadium is built, you would imagine would stun- would suddenly start becoming profitable. Mm. Certainly, if they were run properly, they'd become profitable. Yeah. Then, you know, he's got that decision to make. Mm. They haven't put an offer on the table. They are interested, and there is other interest. And, and as you mentioned, the reports I've done, I, I've been told there are at least three others, and there could actually be even more who are also interested from various parts of the world, Middle East, America, whatever, they're yeah. from different areas. And I can't name them because I don't know the people involved. I yeah, haven't yeah. yet got that information. Uh, but they're from different parts of the world, there are, there are people who are interested too, because going back to what I said originally, mm. and I'm conscious I've spoke for a long time here, but chances to invest in Premier League clubs don't come along too often, but at the same time, it still has to make economic sense. And I think that's where we're at. So now I'm going to go back and answer your question. How serious <laughs> is it? I, I would say at 1.3 to 1.5 billion, not that serious. Mm. Anything less than a billion Maybe I think there'd be inter- there'd, there'd be discussions. You know, there would be negotiations. Mm. But would Mashiri take a significant loss on the money he's put in? I honestly don't know, and obviously only he can answer that. And there's not, I think there's only one person in the whole world that could actually get out of Mashiri what he actually wants to do. And I think we've already mentioned him. Yeah. So it, it that's, is that's where we're at. I reckon. Yeah, I mean, it is really interesting. I'll slightly disagree with some of your numbers, to be honest, just slightly. Um, because I think when you're saying 800 million, I think a couple of hundred millions tied into the stadium there, which puts the, the balance of 300 million, which, yeah. takes it, which takes it to the billion, which is being mentioned. I think you even mentioned that in your thing as well, around the billion, yeah. um, which is still, it's. I mean, that's a hell of a lot of money. But then Chelsea have just gone for 4.3 billion. They're playing albeit Chelsea, Champions League, European champions twice in the last 10 years, always up near the top. I get it, London. I absolutely get it. But are they are they that, you know, four and a half times more value than Everton playing in a Premier League, which is, which is essentially the league, isn't it? You're not really... Anyone buying into Everton, they're not buying into it. Everton as such, you're buying into the Premier League first and foremost, aren't you? And then obviously it's where you it's where you go with that. So do you think the Chelsea price has driven up everything else? Absolutely. And yeah. and, and I mean that's you're absolutely spot on. And maybe my calculations, as I say, they're, they're only my calculations mm. and then they're certainly not expert calculations. Yeah. But I think what people are not factoring in in this billion pound figure, which is what I did originally, mm. is not taking into account what you know losses that could occur over the next three yeah. years before the stadium is built. And mm. whilst it's a fixed price contract, there are other 
other um, costs surrounding the build of the stadium outside that fixed price construct that that would actually still you know rise it up and you're mm. quite right some of um, the 800 million or so that you know we've both roughly calculated it does yeah. include costs that is already sunk into the stadium although i think some of those costs are not included in that fixed price contract to reduce mm. that so right. um, but anyway the, the, going back to exactly what you're saying it is spot on it's a Premier League club. And not only that, it's an established Premier League club, you know, one of the longest in the top flight. I think mm. second longest yeah. in the top flight. So a name a name that resonates around the world, um, in in a league that resonates around the world. And as I keep saying, the, that opportunity comes along so rarely, mm. then you know, you will you'll definitely have interest and people will will undoubtedly be interested. But there is a difference between you know Everton and Chelsea mm. and Manchester United and Manchester City oh, yeah. and Liverpool um, because obviously they are global in in the you know at the moment the deals that they can do and and yeah. Everton I mean obviously they're they're operating a global market but they don't have that global pull and that's yeah. partly I mean you know in fact in Chelsea's and City's case purely down to sort of you know global success if you like or you yeah, know winning yeah. the premier league being constantly in europe champions league latter stages chelsea won last last year didn't they mm. so um and that 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 affects price but, yeah absolutely you know you're right i mean chelsea chelsea figure is is phenomenal and you know manchester united i've seen a recent valuation of them at six billion <laughs> and and i would say that is not ludicrous I would mm. say that is not ludicrous, right. even given the position that they're in at the moment, mm. um, because they have that, still have Pull. that global yeah. sort of, yeah, I mean, probably I, I, all, all the metrics, you know, social media, uh, advertising, contracts with overseas, you know, they're mm. all, they're still the biggest in, in, in the Premier League. Yeah. And, and probably second, third biggest in, second probably in Europe. So, mm. You know, six billion is not outrageous uh, evaluation there. Mad. Um, so, you know, a sixth of Manchester United, it doesn't it doesn't sound outrageous either, does it? Mm. But you it know, mad, Everton have got a few. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know. I think you're. Crazy. I think you're right there. I mean, I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting Everton in that same bracket as Manchester United or Chelsea. Of course, I'm not. Globally, we're not. Commercially, we're not. But I just meant the league as a whole. I mean, our Manchester United playing in the same league. You know, you're talking six billion and, and maybe six hundred million for Everton if you if you didn't include the stadium in it. You know, ten times as much for the league. A team playing in the same league. It is, you know, that's like I said before, that's what you're buying into, but they are crazy figures we're talking about. But as you said right at the very start, the Premier League is the sports franchise, franchises was getting all Americanized here, but sports clubs in the world. <laughs> that's is, what they call it. Well, that's it, isn't it? But the sports clubs in the world, it, it, unbelievable. And the Premier League just seems to be growing and growing and growing with the value. So, you know, maybe these these business analysts might look at it and go, actually, you know what? It's not that bad a price. I, it, it seems mad to me, but, you know, that seems to be where we are. Well, I mean, when you, if you, if you, if, let's say Mashiri does take a, a, a loss on his investment mm. and, and, and we, you factor in the stadium bill cost and the price comes in around a billion pounds, mm. a billion pounds, in a brand new stadium, which is state of the art and has all the commercial things that they would need, but mm. you know all the all the facilities, sponsors, etc. Et you know that 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 for around a billion pounds gives. I mean, it gives you a massive advantage over three quarters of the rest of the Premier League. So mm. you, you suddenly your income is immediately driven. You 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 the, uh, your ability to attract new sponsors he's grown massively yeah. so if you're looking over a two or three year period and think okay at the end of it there is this state of the art stadium you know you'd certainly say Tottenham are at Tottenham are valued at that figure mm. now yeah absolutely. and then you know Everton in that position but it's just coming back to how you view Everton's books at the moment and also yeah. their performance over the last you know under Mashiri the performance yeah. 
Being you can't look at any other way as saying it's it's been a disaster. Mostly, mm. I've got to say, mostly because of him. Some of the decisions he's made, as we both know, we've discussed many times. Some of yeah. the decisions he made are just staggering. Yeah, and he did make these decisions. Let's not hide from that fact. You know, Benitez, Allardyce, oh. he made those decisions, mm. and. Some of the signings that they've made, no, he doesn't make them, but he made the decisions on appointing the people who made those signings. And, yeah. you know, it's just smacks of gross incompetence mm. from from him. And, Absolutely. And you've got you've got all that to deal with before Everton become a, a you know, a really... So the, 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 the entity that we're talking about when they go in the new stadium with all these advantages and getting all these commercial contracts and becoming this global club, that's all there. But you've got to sort all that out first. You've got to sort out Mishiri's legacy, if you like. Yeah. And that's not easy. No, absolutely. All right, final one, and then I will let you go and enjoy your, uh, the rest of your day. Do you actually think he will end up selling in this window? <laughs> Do you know... I... <laughs> I know it's a tough question, by the way. I, 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 I'm not convinced that these current people, Kenyon and his his backers, and by the way, I mean you're going from you're going from an owner who who previously had close business ties with someone who had close business ties with Vladimir Putin, <laughs> yeah, to to a potential buyer who's got very close business ties with Donald Trump, Steve mm. Bannon. And the and the Chinese government. So mm. I mean, frying pan and fire. Sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. jumps jumps out. But yeah. the, I, I'm not I'm not convinced by it by Kenyon and and his consortium. But there are others, and mm. I believe there are at least one other that is serious, if not the two. Mm. So yes, I could see it happening, but I would say. Mashiri's gonna probably almost certainly have to take a loss on his his investment. Will he do that? Maybe, maybe not. He, I still think he will think once they get into the stadium, he's bound to make a profit. And can he fund the losses and Until then. and not need the money? You know, mm. and and then it comes back to what I said earlier. And I don't want to go over that too much. But yeah. does anybody else need the money out of Everton? Mm. Um, then it, that's that's the key question. If they don't, then they could decide. Well, actually, you know, all the things that were making it saleable are the reasons to keep it. But I I could see another another buyer actually buying before the end of this summer. Yeah. Interesting, David. Thank you very much for uh, for taking the time. I'm sure the story's going to run and run. And I'm sure there'll be many more pieces for you to uh, to pen or to well not to pen but you know get on the type out on your uh, on your computer there before the summer is out. Uh, th- I, I I could do with a holiday, mate. So I'm hoping <laughs> yeah, have your quickly. holiday. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely have your holiday first, and I'm sure it'll run and run. Thanks for taking the time out today and uh, go on and enjoy. Great to speak to you again. And you, mate, look after yourself. Yeah, cheers. All right, cheers, David. Big thanks there to David Maddock from the Mirror for joining us uh, on the consortium. This is going to run and run, I think, throughout the summer. So it is a watch this space. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think Farah and Shady will sell up this summer? And do you think it will be to Peter Kenyon's consortium? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Thanks for watching. See you later.